Let's talk about fish passage on dams, what it is, why we need it, and how it's changed over the years. First, it's important to remember that fish passage at a dam usually is referring to two separate things. If we're talking about adult fish, something big enough to hold in your hands, we're talking about upstream fish passage. These are the salmon at the end of their life cycle who are going upstream to spawn. They've already lived most of their life out in the ocean, and now they're essentially coming back to die and propagate the species. This instinct to return home to the place of their birth is what makes upstream passage relatively simple. These salmon want to travel home so badly they will do anything to get there. And this is where fish ladders come in. It turns out that if you just provide a means to get around the dam, the adult salmon will generally find it. Now you want to make it as easy on them as possible. You got to get the current at the right speed. You have to make sure it's free from predators. You want to make sure there's plenty of places to rest as they make the journey up. But this concept is very old and it works extremely well. As long as the dam has reasonable upstream passage, with fish ladders that are big enough and easy to find, the salmon have no problem migrating upstream. But remember, before salmon could look like this, it once looked like this. Fish begin their lives as these tiny little fingerlings that are literally swept downstream by the spring runoff. For however many adult fish come back in the fall, you need to have several hundred times that amount hatch and make their way to the ocean four years earlier. Which is why downstream fish passage is just as important, if not more, than upstream passage. Unfortunately, it took us 40 or 50 years to figure this out. Most of the major dams on the Columbian Snake River were originally built with upstream fish passage, but it's really only been in the last 30 years or so that downstream passage has become a major priority. And the reasons for that are pretty straightforward. Like I said before, upstream passage is relatively easy. You literally see these enormous fish jumping up over the waves. Baby fish, on the other hand, they don't have quite as much agency in the whole thing. We're literally just getting swept down with the currents. Dams like these slow down the water, making the trip downstream a lot longer. More time in the river means more time exposed to predators. It also increases the chances that some outside environmental force could kill them. Things like the water being too hot, algae blooms. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things that can kill baby fish, which is why advances in technology are so important. It's not the 1950s anymore. We've got cameras and lasers and radar, computers, simulators all kinds of different ways to monitor their progress, see what works, and see what doesn't. And here's what we've learned. The juvenile fish tend to swim in the top 10 feet or so of the water. The main structure of the dam has two main ways to get water around. The main spillway gates, which pull water about 40 feet or so below the surface, and the generators in the powerhouse, which pulls water even deeper. To improve passage, several of the dams have added this piece of metal to skim water out of the top few feet above the spillway, allowing many more of the juveniles to find their way past. Even more dams have added special passages to pull fish out of the main intakes and through a dedicated bypass specially designed for young fish. Millions of juveniles pass through this system every year, making their way out into the ocean so they can continue their life cycle. The more we study these issues, the more tools we discover to aid in downstream fish passage. For example, the downstream migration tends to happen in a very specific period of time. The dams on the Snake River in Columbia know this, and let extra water out during this time to help speed the process along. Another concern is water temperature. With the climate warming, these stretches of river can get too hot for the juveniles to survive. But this is where it gets really clever. The high dams in the system, like Dwarjak and Grand Coulee, may not have traditional fish passage, but they do have access to very cold water. The deeper the reservoir, the colder it gets. Which means that releases from dams like this are used to cool off the streams that are too warm, bringing the whole system back into balance. It's worth pointing out that right now, 2022, we are seeing some of the largest migration numbers ever recorded on the Columbian Snake Rivers. And this is despite decades of inadequate passage facilities on these dams. All of these facilities have come a long ways in how they accommodate fish. And there's a lot left to be done, which is why it is so important that we not give up now on the promise of clean hydropower. It is 100% possible for us to have clean hydropower and healthy salmon runs at the same time. Right now, it's like, it's like happening now, and it will only get better as more innovation is implemented. Our hydropower is plentiful, it's consistent, and it puts no new carbon in the atmosphere. And if our fish runs are stewarded properly, we can sustain this for hundreds of years to come.